Is happening. My name is Matt Bradford. Today we're going to talk about some really small builders. When I shop for products, one of my favorite things to do now with the access I have to people is to shop with the people who, when I call on the phone, that's the same guy or gal or whomever that is building the product that I'm going to be buying. So my amps, um, my pedals, my guitars, I build myself. But, but the amps and the pedals, the one, my main stuff is all built by people that you talk to the person building the amp. I do, my high gain amp right now is a Mesa. That is the one that I need to replace with something more uh, boutique, I guess is the word. Today, the amp I'm gonna use is handmade and it's a Black Volt amplification crazy horse. It was made for me. So what happened is this. I went into to Black Volt Amplification and I talked to Gio. Gio's the owner. I've known Gio for a long time and we kind of talked about the things I look for in amp and then when he built the amp, he actually tuned it for me. So he did some things that he felt would, would, uh, would lend themselves to my playing style and to the things that I had said to him that I look for when I was playing amps around his place. This is an incredible amplifier. It feels like it was built for me. For a long time I had a rolling tube amp expander. And one of the things I noticed was I was blowing tubes a lot and I ended up actually blowing um, an output transformer in my old 67 Bandmaster, which was a total bummer. But I remember at one point I was blowing tubes and I, and I took I took my, my crazy horse to, to Geo and said, man, I'm blowing tubes. This is the second set of power tubes. Uh, and he said, let me look into it. And it wasn't like leave it with me. He pulled it out, the chassis out, while I was there, put it on the bench, and then pulled up the voltages that he had going through the amp, through the Variac, at his shop when it was built. And he was able to check the voltages of my amp against the voltages of my amp when it was built and everything was reading okay. These are the things that you don't get in, in larger builders. Here's another cool one. This is, this is from Seeker, I have two. Okay. These are amazing. These are from Seeker Effects, uh, Seeker Electric Effects, sorry. Mike over at Seeker, same thing. One man band over there. And what we're talking about is knowing about transistors, vintage ones, being able to tune stuff. This is a buzz around copy. This is, the the first, the very first of his truth fuzz, which is now a thing that he makes. And these are incredible pedals. They are hand-selected, hand-tuned transistors. These little things like tuning, right? I'm gonna tune my this thing to this player. I'm gonna tune this thing to sound the way it sounds. It's, you can't do that on a large scale. These pedals are not 
for the amount of work that goes into them, they are not that expensive. Mike has to go around and find all these vintage transistors and all these other cool vintage parts. On top of that, he then has to tune them all, get them all together, get them in the enclosure, sell them, ship them, and, and it, yeah, these are incredible, incredible pedals. They sound amazing, and the amount of work that's gone into each one is, is awesome. Low sounds, Aisha and Fiona. You know what's really cool is I've actually gotten to meet um, Aisha a couple times, and, and so this is the same thing. I know that she goes scavenging for parts to find the right transistors for the super fuzz, to find the right transistors for the low high, for all of the stuff. There's, there's so much care into finding each component before she then has to paint the enclosures, put everything together, and then again, put it on the website, sell it, all the stuff. The amount of work that one person is doing to create something like this is, is, is shocking. And the components in here are top notch. Every time I've had a conversation with Aisha, she's super knowledgeable about what's going on. It's, it is awesome. And then you get these like custom, I'm gonna probably do, these custom enclosures, you know, with these beautiful woods and, and these, these beautiful engraved badges and, and just everything is neat, everything is tidy, everything is hand wired. I guarantee you, I haven't had a problem, but I guarantee you if you have a problem with something, she's gonna take care of it. Speaking of which, my R Weaver Effects Violet Vibe. This thing sounds incredible. Um, there's, there's, some, there's some info out there, I think, about, about these, and, and I remember when I was first buying this, I was looking at a lot of different vibes. This is, again, small guy. I, I don't know how big he is. I've never met him, but like small shop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's, he's going out and finding the components. He's doing everything by hand. I know he's done a lot of work figuring out how to make a Univibe sound right. And then what's really cool is this. I had a problem with, with this one. That happens, right? Things go down, especially with like vintage components and stuff. Things break sometimes. So I, I hit up Rick uh, from, from R. That's what the R stands for. In R Weaver, it's it's Rick Weaver. Um, I hit up Rick and I said, "Yo, I have a problem." And he was like, "Dude, send it to me." I think it was like the day after he got it, it was on its way back to me. Like it, the most shocking, amazing customer service. That's what you get when you get a one man shop or a two man shop. He might have his kid working with him. Um, regardless, the that's the kind of way that I want to do business with guys who are doing uh, really cool work. And, and stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's what I'm looking for. And finally, um, Paperboy Pedals. Bryce at Paperboy. When you take a look at the, um, the, the craftsmanship on these, just on the enclosures themselves, look at this. This is a, this is a cloth wrapped, cloth wrapped pedal here. This is also a cloth wrapped uh, pedal. This is, this is point to point, which is shocking and staggering and amazing. The amount of work and technique that goes into creating something like this. And again, germanium transistors, the, the, the craftsmanship is, is top notch. The materials are top notch. And uh, I mean, it's just, this is a fuzz face um, to be proud of. And then this is, I think this is, this is the sweetheart. This I think is one of, one of Bryce's designs um, himself, it's it's really cool, and it really does a lot of cool stuff. Um, again, I think it's got, I think it's German, you know, you, get, you have to ask Bryce. I think it's Germanium. Either way, you can see how clean everything looks inside. It's all point-to-point -point hand wound. I guarantee you, these components are not just like, oh, we go out and find, like these are old transistors, super rad, super cool sounding, tons of mojo, and these are the things that you get when you shop small. And so I want to go through some sounds and I want to go through some stuff that you're going to get from these pedals. And I just want to, com not compare is the wrong word, I just want to play some stuff and, and get some sounds and get some, some cool vibes going. But when you even just look at them, when you hold them, you go, wow, this is a quality product. There's no surface mount uh, components. I don't know if that's necessarily good or bad, but at least for me, I really like the vintage components, the vintage uh, transistors, all of the really cool mojo stuff. A lot of it's not even made anymore. And you can't do these on like high production runs because you can't A, find the parts and B, each one of these machines requires a level of tuning 
and a level of, of, of sort of like, it's not like bolting on a carburetor. These have, because the tolerances are looser in the transistors, everything else has to be attuned to them. And that is really, really cool. And so you get these sort of unique pieces that, that are only, no, nothing is gonna sound, nothing else is gonna sound like each of these pedals. They'll be similar because they have the circuits and the circuits are similar, but, but they're gonna be their own thing. So let's get into some sounds. Okay, so I'm gonna go through my Black Volt Crazy Horse, which is behind me, but because it's behind me, because my vocal mic is right here and I don't wanna blow it out because uh, my partner's in the other room and I don't feel like getting divorced tonight, uh, we're gonna go through a Sur Reactive Low to IR as opposed to the Black Volt Cab, which is kind of a shame because the Black Volt Cab is a huge part of the sound and it sounds awesome, but that is in other videos and we're gonna do a whole Black Volt thing at some point. But not today. So the Black Volt, I have it set up like this, clean. Really nice. I'm also using a little bit of um, of reverb from my Benson Studio Tallbird. It's a it's a, it's a, it's a spring it's a spring reverb that I use as an insert in my DAW. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. Okay, Black Volt. That was the clean. Here's the dirty. <laughs> It's such like tweed goodness. So we have to clean again. So good, it is so good. And then let's uh, let's hit it with a little boost. So this is a pit boy sweetheart. There's like a bunch of different clipping options and things going on. It tames it quite a bit. Let's get it. You may notice I'm not going in order on the pedal board. Uh, that's not what this is about. I'm just kind of trying to grab the stuff that, that moves me. One of my favorite pedals is this one here. This Seeker, uh, this is a buzz around that Mike built for me. It's a fancy case. I don't remember who makes it at the moment, but Monarch. Monarch? Monarch with this like dipped enclosure. Everything is hand done and it's... So much texture. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> that one's so cool. And you can hear like the differences, right? These are both germanium. They're they're not. This is not a fuzz. It's like a boost, but. <laughs> Put that one there, but the differences are dramatic. Well, that's the Paperboy Sweetheart. This is the Seeker. So let's, I'm gonna get into the other Paperboy and the other Seeker stuff, but let's get into the low stuff. The low, Aisha holds a special place in my heart. Um, She's really helped me out with some stuff when I was building some circuits for myself, and I and I have done some of that. But this is a well. This let's go with the super fuzz first. The super fuzz is sort of, to me at least, the definitive uh, low sounds pedal. that sounds so much I find that so inspiring and it's just it's such a magic pedal um, one of the things too just a little trick if you haven't watched my octave fuzz video one of the tricks with octave fuzz is you roll the volume uh, the tone knob back that's the, that's the one that you don't usually use the tone knob uh, you roll it all the way back and and it really helps a lot um, oh it's so cool and you know, I don't actually know what the knobs do. Um. I mean, that's awesome. So let's go from there to the low sounds. Um, uh, this is more of an Octavia style octave fuzz. That's a super fuzz, which is a different one. I mean, come on. It's so good. I I mean, it's hard to, you know, there's there's not a lot of knobs here to, to turn. Um It's so gnarly and nasty and amazing. I love that so much. Um, okay, so this is like the big dog. The big dog is the wrong word, but this is the most gnarly of my of my fuzzes. I think not just of these, but of the fuzzes. This is like the this one. 
The reason the Black Volt blew me away was because this one didn't collapse it. This one's, the Black Volt stays tight when the truth is on. I mean, it's just so cool. So there's two knobs. I don't know what they do. Um, you know, again, it's one of those things like they are labeled. I, I have them not a manual or something. I don't, I don't know. I probably have a manual somewhere. But I just turn them until they sound good. I'm going to guess volume and bias. That's my guess. That is such a monster pedal. You know, compared to the buzz around, it's such a different sound. Um, let's add the, the Paper Boy. Such different sounds, and obviously what we are forgetting, we're not forgetting it, we're just saving it for last, because this this pedal and I have a really special relationship because this is the one that kind of put me on the map for some reason. And and I don't exactly know why, but it doesn't matter. Um, so this is the paper boy stank face. It is Point to point, hand wired, germanium transistors, the cleanup, let's go to the clean channel on the um, on the amp. The cleanup is phenomenal. And then you can just hear what the how the dirty channel kind of tightens up the low end for me and just So cool, man, and and so I can clean it up. And that just freaking rules for me. Like that is, I love that so much. I don't know why I'm yelling at you. Uh, it happens every, every video at this point. I start getting excited. That is amazing. All right, and then finally, um, We've had this flashing light on the whole time, and we haven't had it on yet. I'm, I've got the paper boy still on. I'm gonna leave it on. This is normally how I would set. Well, I don't know. I, I turn it off for a second. Um, this is my my violet vibe. This was my entrance into the world of really good vibes. Um, yeah, good vibes. Uh, really good Univibe style pedals, and it is awesome.
It's just killer. It's just killer. Um, and, and, and and you can get the, you know, let's let's uh let's go to vibrato for a second. I don't really use this setting, but it's it's amazing. I mean, that's pretty righteous, but my favorite setting is obviously here and then with a little bit of groove. So let's put a little stank face on there, right? We back it off a little bit so it's more of like an overdrive vibe. And there it is. That sound is... Right? Like, that's awesome. I mean, this is another one. This is another way to go. Same thing. Um, I could use something like the, uh, probably like the low sound here. Right? It's a little brash in there. Um... Yeah, I, I, you know, I like a cleaner sound with the Univibe in general. You know, going into the amp just clean and, or dirty rather, a dirty, slightly dirty amp and then... That's surprisingly quiet too. Is something gating? No, it's just good, good, clean sound. All right, nice. So, let me just wrap it up with this. <clears throat> you know, you 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 can't. I, some of this stuff you just can't get. Like you're not gonna get a really cool octave fuzz, um, like like the lows. You're not gonna. You can't get any of these at a mass produced level. It's just not, it's not available. It's not available for all the reasons we just talked about. And then on top of that, the fact that I get to talk to these people one-on-one, -on -one, I've talked to Rick, I've talked to Bryce, I've talked to Aisha, and I've talked to Mike. I've talked to every single one of those guys. 
Um, I've met Aisha in person. Uh, you know, I, I every time I go to Gio's shop, Black Vault, if I'm in the area, it always ends up being like a four hour trip. Like it's never just like, hey Gio, what's up? And then I leave. It's always like, dude, check this out. And then like we're sitting there talking and the guys in the shop are awesome and there's just so much knowledge there and we get, kind of geek out and there's just, there is a joy to this. And that's, that's kind of the whole point for me of music, obviously, is joy and gear. Part of that is, is finding inspiration. And then the other part for me is obviously getting to work with people that I respect, getting to work with people that I really love. Um, I paid for most of these pedals. I paid for the amp. I paid full price for most of this stuff. Not all of it, some of, most of it. Um, and it's because I love it. And because these, these guys are working on such slim margins, it's crazy. And, and so they don't necessarily have the dough for like the big fancy um, uh, uh, demo guys. I'm not getting paid for this at all, by the way. This is just, I was like, I wanna do a video about these super small builders that I love very much. And um, I can't say enough good things about each one of these builders individually. The tones are obviously awesome and um, yeah, I just I want to support these guys, and I and I hope you will too. I hope you will take a second. If there's any of the tones you like, reach out to the builders. I'm leaving links, uh, in, <laughs> leaving links in the bio. Uh, subscribe, share, do all the stuff you're supposed to do, so that uh, you know. Hopefully, I can grow this thing. If you like it, if you don't, you know, leave a mean comment in the in the in the thing, and I'll I'll post it on Instagram. <laughs>